Hey guys, Mike in the Woods here. As I'm sure you're aware by now, my goal is to find ways to integrate fun, futuristic technology with traditional outdoors experiences. And as you've seen with my growing list of videos, one of the avenues I'm exploring this with is through the use of 3D printed tools, upgrades, and accessories for backcountry use. Now, being a Canadian, half of the year we have to deal with this crap, but with the crew I roll with, that's not exactly a deal breaker for backcountry trips. So the question becomes, how well will 3D printed tools hold up to sub-zero temperatures? Guess what we're gonna talk about in this video? All right, so let's get this out of the way first. When I say 3D printed tools, I refer to the kind printed in plastic at home on a 3D printer. And I specify this because there are industrial scale 3D printers that can print in solid metal. Unfortunately, those things are very large and well outside of the price range of your average person by several factors. Okay, so the concern is when you mix plastic with sub-zero temperatures, you get changes on the molecular level that make plastic much more brittle. Remember what liquid nitrogen does to stuff? Same concept, just not as extreme. So what happens is that tools and gear that you've made that would normally have more flex to it under stress suddenly gets a lot more rigid and actually runs the risk of shattering from the applied forces. And this applies to any plastic part, 3D printed or otherwise, but with the 3D printed stuff, it gives it a weak point along the layer lines. If you've watched my video on how to design and 3D print tools for outdoor use, linked up at the top of the screen if you're interested, you'll know that you need to design tools to avoid stresses along this axis anyways, but for cold weather applications, that consideration is even more important. And because of the reduced flexibility and increased brittleness, a good first point of attack at preparing a 3D printable tool or upgrade for winter use is to reduce or eliminate the need for it to flex, such as on parts like belt clips and buckles. When it comes to plastics in the freezing cold, not all plastics are created equal. To hedge your bets, I would suggest picking a really strong and durable plastic meant for outdoors use. If you're really concerned, something like nylon or ASA, which is meant for outdoors use. But even then, don't count out your basic 3D print materials like PLA or ABS for cold weather use. Take for example, this simple ice scraper I made on my original 3D printer, like man, this is like six years ago. I made it out of a cool zombie green ABS, and I keep this thing in my car for scraping ice and snow off. And six years later, this thing is still perfectly fine. I also recently put together a pack frame saw, and for no other reason than I could, I 3D printed my windlass out of solid PLA. If you don't know how a bushcraft style bow saw works, you have cordage along the top that you wind up as taut as you can get it to stretch the saw blade, and the windlass is what keeps the tension by pressing up against your center beam to prevent the cordage from unwinding. This means that all the tension from this massive 30 inch saw is transferred through this 3D printed windlass. And I've taken this saw out on winter camp already, two nights out in the bush, bottoming out at around negative eight degrees Celsius. Other than a bit of a curve to it, it's held up just fine so far to me sawing firewood all weekend, and it's only one centimeter thick. For some upcoming winter trips in January and February, I'm going to take some simple tent stakes that I designed for staking down my tarp in dirt or in the snow. As long as you don't require your part to have a lot of flex to it, making it in something like PLA seems to be perfectly fine, as long as you bulk up the design in any potential weak points where it could snap. So, in short, yes, plastic gets more brittle and rigid in sub-zero temperatures, but not to the point of unusability. To summarize, the key points to making 3D printed tools and upgrades that work well in winter are consider using a really durable plastic like nylon or ASA, bulking up potential weak points that could snap, and reducing or eliminating the need for the part to flex. And that's it, pretty simple. As always, I'll continue to find new and interesting tools to 3D print and bring out with me into the backcountry year round. I've already come up with some really useful tools like this Katadyne filter adapter and this hobo fishing reel that are actually really good pieces of kit that I take out with me. And if you're interested in getting any of these for yourself, I'll leave links in the description to my 3D print shop and to the models themselves if you want to print your own, which is a good way to help out the channel if you're so inclined. If you have any cool ideas for tools or upgrades or adapters, etc., I would love to hear about them, so please post about them in the comments below. Same for any specific tests or environments you want to see these tools used in. And if you're new to the channel, like I said at the start, I look for ways to combine fun, futuristic technology with traditional outdoors adventuring, so check out my back catalog of videos and consider subscribing if that's your thing. That's it for me guys, I'll catch you next video.